Well, hello again, everyone. It's your girl, Gabrielle, from A Step Ahead Tutoring Service. Welcome to a brand new episode of Hot Topics. And if you're not already familiar with us, let me just tell you real quick. This is the web series where we talk real talk about things in education, employment, mental health, physical health, kind of health <laughs> or just anything else that is steamy. So today is a very interesting topic and I'm very looking forward to this conversation. Our topic today is mental health and education. That is our topic for today and I have a fabulous guest who is going to help me with this conversation. Her name is Juanita Walters. So let me put up her banner here. Who is Juanita Walters, let me tell you who she is. So Juanita Walters is a devoted mother of two young kings, Reggie and Micah. She's also a minister, an author, an educator, a poet, and a mentor slash certified life coach. Born and raised in Queens, New York, her work ethic has taken her from customer service to prison gates to now teaching in elementary school and acquiring her school building leadership license. She's a lover of God, an advocate for mental wellness, empowering youth and women, and adhering to the call on her life. So let me bring her to the stage right now. Juanita? Yes, I'm here. There you are. Oh, let me take your banner off. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, and yourself? Good, good. So we're talking about mental health and education. And I wanted to get your perspective on that. So I'm going to hand over the baton to you, and I'm going to let you just divulge. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. So mental health and education. Um, for me, I believe that it is super important. You know, you can teach the students academics, you can focus on their grades, you can focus on, you know, that academic um, intelligence, intelligence exchange. But at the root of it, you also have to get to their social emotional uh, that social emotional piece, that social emotional piece is super important. And with that, you know, it comes with mental health. A lot of times our students come in and they come in with stuff that we can't see, right? It's easy to see the student that, you know, maybe struggling academically, but what's behind the wall of them struggling academically? What's going on at home? What's going on in their mind, right? A lot of times our true students come in with trauma. A lot of times they come in with some emotional baggage. And so you as an educator, one of the ways that you can get a pulse on your class is by having those conversations with your students, building a relationship with your students and getting to know them. And as you start to get to know them, you start to uncover or they start to reveal certain pieces about them that will kind of give you some kind of insight as to their mental state. Uh, you know, working in education, this is my eighth year working in education. And I've encountered so many students that they struggle like emotionally because they've had trauma, you know, in their life or they're going through ongoing situations, which could be from, you know, staying in a shelter, uh, experiencing some kind of sexual abuse, some physical abuse, some mental abuse, um, not having both of their parents present. So a lot of times or be or you know, dealing with issues with their identity. So there's a lot of things that our students come into the building with that we don't necessarily see on the surface, but it takes you as an educator. I'm not saying go pry into their business and say, hey, you know, what are you doing mentally? And like, you know, go digging deep. But if you pay attention and you notice the signs, you'll notice that there are children that face, you know, I'm, I'm suicidal. I'm depressed. I'm being bullied. Like they feel a lot of the things that 
we as an adult feel is just that sometimes they don't have the coping mechanisms or they don't know how to express it. So how that usually ends up is it starts to manifest or show itself in different behaviors. And so if you're just, you know, looking and you're like, oh, they're not listening. They, their behavior is crazy and they're doing this, that, and the third. But a lot of times, some of those behaviors are them acting out the trauma that has gone unchecked, the depression that's gone unchecked, the suicidal thoughts that are gone unchecked, and just so many different things. And so as an educator, it's super important to tune in and know the signs and pay attention, like really having a pulse on your students. Because if they are not in the right headspace or the right mental space, they're not really going to be receptive to what you're trying to pour into them academically. So they go hand in hand. If you want the students to grow and excel academically, you have to incorporate that social emotional learning piece and finding out where they are mentally. Uh, and I know when a lot of educators, they're like, listen, we got enough on our plate. We got these top-down mandates. We got grading to do. We have all these assessments to do. We have lesson plans. We got so many things. You want me to be a teacher, a counselor, a mother? A no, we're not asking you as educators to do that. But we are asking you that one of the important pieces is that you know your students and you know your students well. And sometimes knowing your students well is picking up on what they might be going through so that you can provide them with resources or provide their family with resources to help them. So the, the whole goal is the whole child, the whole child. So I think like mental health and education, you know, they try to separate it, but they really do go hand in hand, especially in this time, you know, dealing with the pandemic, a lot of our kids, they're coming in and they're having some challenges adjusting to coming back to our quote unquote normal. And, you know, I can't even begin to tell you where there's times where kids are like, listen, I'm stressed out. I'm dealing with anxiety. Or one kid, she's like, I'm emotionally disturbed. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, so we have some of our kids that like, you know, whether it's the adult telling them that, but there are some kids that will tell you, like, sometimes I don't feel right in my thinking. I've had kids as young as in the fifth grade, like, like a group of them talk about suicide. Now, had I not been circulating and moving around the classroom or getting to know my students and paying attention, I could have easily missed that. And I could have went another way. Right. So they're like, oh, you don't want to talk about suicide or anxiety or depression when it comes to the ch children. And the truth is they face the same things that we face. Right. So I think it's super important as educators that we address those issues and we address them early, because if we address them early, it gives them a chance to grow into their fullest potential. Absolutely. So. There's, let's talk about those issues that tend to, to come up as mm -hmm. an, an educator. You mentioned some of them already. You mentioned anxiety, suicidal thinking, stress, depression. Do, do those mental health issues come up a lot? Are there others that you, you tend to see in your classrooms? Um, those are the most prevalent ones that I have encountered um, firsthand uh, in dealing with students. Uh, I know when I first came into teaching, I've dealt with kids that, you know, they were in transitional housing and there was a lot of things going on in their fi family dynamics, right? And so they would have, when I say their behaviors would be crazy, their behaviors would be, you know, some, from violent like towards other people to self-inflicting harm to themselves. And it's like at first, first glance, you want to get mad and you're like, he don't listen. He don't. But then it's like, if you take a moment. So there's many times where I've sat on the floor in the hallway or in the classroom and just listened to students talk 
And when they start to trust you, you know, they'll start to tell you how they're feeling, right? And your job as an educator is to refer them to resources, get the guidance counseling involved, get the school psychologist involved, talk to the parents. You know, uh, you know, you'll be amazed that when you build relationships with parents, parents will also tell you, you know, I've had parents tell me, you know, my child deals with anxiety and they don't know how to express their feelings uh, and they're going to therapy. There's so many of our children that go to therapy, but you won't know that if you don't build a relationship with the child or if you don't build a relationship with the student. Right. So, you know, there are students where they feel overwhelmed. And they feel like suicide is the option or they're depressed and then they stay to themselves or they start exhibiting certain certain behaviors. You know, one thing I know like about this generation, they're exposed to so much more than what we were exposed to as children growing up, right? Where it's like, it's not hard for them to see a video of somebody you know, harming themselves or someone acting out because they had trauma and thinking it's okay, right? We see it all the time, right? Where students, you know, they internalize the bully and they internalize the trauma they experience and then they go to the school and they blow up. And this is just stuff that like builds up over time, over time, over time, because nobody took the time to see what was behind the behaviors that were manifesting inside the classroom or inside the school building, right? It was just academic, 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 like focus on the academic piece, focus on your rating, right? We got to get these numbers up. You know, we got to make sure our math scores are up, that our reading scores are up. Meanwhile, there are a lot of children that are hurting. And unless you address that 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 mental health piece, that social emotional piece, like you're going to that's that's not a good recipe. Like if you're talking about the whole child and you talk about making sure that you know you are preparing the children to compete in the 21st century, how are they going to do that if they're not mentally right, if they're not emotionally right, and if you don't address those trauma issues so that they don't grow up into adults? that have these issues with communicating and making sure that they are taking care of themselves. Mm. So in, in hearing you talk, a couple things came to mind. Uh, so I'll start with one. So as, as an educator, as a teacher, where does one find the balance between the the academic work that they do in the classroom and the the mental health work that they do. So where do you find the balance between addressing a child's needs academically and mentally? I can't speak for all educators. I know for me, uh, the social emotional piece comes first. I want like, because Think about us as adults, right? If we're stressed out or we dealing with anxiety or we have some trauma and we're not dealing with it, think about how that impacts our performance as adults. Some of us don't show up for work. Some of us, you know, quit jobs. Like so many things happen, you know, when we're under pressure, right? Think about children now. When they're going through these different issues, how are they going to be able to focus on the schoolwork and the academic piece if that's not, you know, rectified? And I'm not telling educators that you need to be the social worker or the school psychologist. But what I am saying is get to know your students and spend that time. So what you lose 10 minutes out of your lesson because, you know, one of your scholars came in and you said, hey, good morning. How are you doing? Ugh. My life is like in shambles. I can't take it. It takes nothing from you if you take five minutes to say, you want to tell me what's going on? Or do you mind if I, you know, refer you to the school social worker or guidance counselor, maybe someone that you can trust that you can have that conversation? It doesn't take that much time to do that. 
And you'll be surprised that when you sit up there and you say, good morning, Skyla, how are you? And really mean it, and they know you mean it, you'll be surprised what doors that are open up for you to like address that. And what I've learned is that like, I had a student, he was considered emotionally disturbed and he was having a lot of, you know, trauma from throwing stuff and, you know, being violent in the classroom. But once we started addressing that mental health piece, that social emotional piece, we were able to get him to sit down and focus in on doing the work. It became to a point where he wanted to do the work and he started to like excel in doing the work, right? I mean, and it's not an overnight process, right? It's like, you got to chunk it. You got to take it one step at a time, one day at a time. So you can see the gradual progression, right? So imagine if I just was like, oh, he's a behavior problem. I'm not dealing with it. I know he better pass that class. That wouldn't have did him no good, and that would have made a very frustrating school year. So as an educator, you do have to find that balance. You do have to take out time where that might look like you might lose five minutes or 10 minutes in the lesson. Because the honesty of the situation is if you don't address it today, you're going to deal with it tomorrow or later on. So why not be proactive? and find ways of getting to know your students and making sure that you have the resources on hand for their parents and for them if should a mental health crisis arise and now you're not you're being reactive instead of proactive in the situation especially in this day and time so does that should that apply to to any age and grade level? Or are you talking about specific ages and grades? No. <laughs> Listen, I've worked in I've worked in elementary school and now I work in middle school. Elementary school, the kids, some of those kids deal with real life trauma. You know, you you gotta think about it. Like, you know, when I was in fifth grade and, and my parents split up, that was devastating for me. Like I, I was sad. I was going through some things emotionally. And thank God I had a fifth grade teacher that like she went like she knew her students and she knew her students well. And she went, you know, above and beyond to get to know this, her students outside of the classroom. And for me, her taking the time out to get to know me outside of the classroom and not just focus on the academic piece, but who I was as one of her students was very helpful for, for me. In fact, until this day, she's, she's like my other mother. And I'm not telling educators, go out there and try to be somebody's other mother or whatever. But what I'm saying is that you never know how far planting that seed of caring and nurturing and love into what you're doing into that child, how far that can go and how much you can help that child grow. Right. You know, if you come in there like and, you know, it's like a heart check, a core check. Like, why am I in this for teaching? Right. Is it so that I could just make sure that they're brilliant, but mentally unstable? Or is it because when I step inside this building, inside this classroom, I'm thinking about the whole child. No, I'm not a professional, you know, psychologist or social worker, but I can bring awareness to certain issues. I can provide resources. I can learn about the different issues and challenges that my students are facing. You know, that's part of the learning curve. That's part of your professional duties, not just the academic piece. That social emotional learning piece is so important. And it's not something that you just slap on to your schedule all right, you know what? We're going to deal with social emotional learning at period three or period seven. No, it has to be embedded in your practice. It can't just be something that you just see as a mandate that, oh, we just got to do it because that's what, you know, the DOE or our educational, you know, facility tells us that we have to do. No, it has to be part of your practice. It has to be part of what you do. It has to be woven into your curriculum and your routines and your structure. People don't understand how important culture and climate play in making sure that our students have a healthy place to grow mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. 
You want students to excel, you got to address all those issues. So my, so then my question is then as would it be better to instead of like the the teacher or the educator addressing those issues to i mean could you mention before about referring them to a school psychologist or counselor but to encourage these issues to be addressed at home or you know working with the parents to addressing those issues as opposed to the teacher dealing with it because i mean you mentioned before um and even i'm thinking you know the teacher feels like there's a lot they have to juggle so and there's a lot of outside forces that are around them as well so um would it i wonder if it would be better to just encourage these the mental health issues that come up to be addressed with the home outside of the school as opposed to in the school? I think it depends on the situation and circumstance. Every situation and circumstance is different. And you gotta think about it as an educator, you in front of that kid every day for about six and a half hours. They spend a lot of their time with you, right? So a lot of them, if you build relationships with them, they're going to talk to you. If you build relationships with their parents, their parents are going to talk to you. Um, so yeah, definitely as an educator, definitely utilize your resources and the people with inside your building that are trained and are professional to handle mental health issues. But your job as an educator on the front line is to pay attention, to get to know your students and know when something is off. You have right? to educate yourself on the different things that children may face and deal with. That's your job. Like the learning, you know, professional development is not just about learning the academic piece so that you can effectively uh, teach students the concepts and skills that they know to, they should know to apply to real life. It's also about preparing them to be, you know, good citizens inside their community to be, you know, building blocks within their community. And they could only do that if they're mentally well. And so I think like as an educator, no, I'm not telling you to say, okay, you know what, I'm the social worker and a psychologist. But what I am telling you is that you do have to make time in your day should these issues arise where the kids are gonna talk to you, right? And you can't ignore it. You can't just say, well, that's not my job. So. I'm not going to address it. That's not what I get paid to do. I only get paid to teach. Yeah, you get paid to teach. But part of that teaching is that social emotional piece, teaching your scholars how to problem solve, conflict resolution, right? Analyzing those critical thinking skills. So when you think about those skills that you teach in and, and, and reading and in math, they're applicable to managing your emotions. They're applicable to dealing with your mental state, right? How can I problem solve? I'm feeling stressed out. I'm dealing with anxiety. How can I problem solve? What solution can I come up with that? So the same skills that we teach in reading, writing, and math, they're applicable in that, that social emotional piece, really. Because a lot of times it's not that, you know, kids um, can't do it. It's just that we, as a, the adults in their life, have to empower them to do it. That's why it's also important for teachers to be self-aware of their own mental state, their own social emotional space, right? Do I have the capacity to deal with this? Where am I at mentally, right? Am I dealing with my, my life issues or my trauma or my stress or my anxiety, if I do have those things, am I dealing with it? Because you can't teach kids how to do it if you ain't doing it, if you're not addressing the issues within you, right? So as an educator too, you have to be self-aware of who you are. You have to be secure in your identity. You have to know your capacity. And then you'll be able to turnkey that and help 
your students. Awesome. So let's talk about things to look out for. So what are, so for educators, teachers, um, anybody really in the educational field, what are the signs to look out for um, in, in, in children? What things, behaviors, actions, words, anything that we should pay attention to? Um, pay attention to the students that are withdrawing. Pay attention to the students that, you know, may exhibit some extreme behavior such as, you know, being violent either towards their peers or towards themselves. Um, pay attention to those students that don't have positive self-talk, right? Where their self-esteem or their confidence is low or non-existent, right? So those are just some of those things to pay attention to. I mean, I don't know them all because I'm not, you know, a licensed psychologist or social worker, but just in my experiences, just, you know, paying attention to, you know, those particular things that I mentioned before. Like you see a kid and they don't got no friends. It's like, all right, go talk to them. What's going on? You know, or you see a kid where it always seems like they're frazzled and they're nervous and they're like jittery or very combative. All right, what's going on? How you doing today? You know, can you, you want to talk to me about why you just keep, you know, being so, you know, yelling at everybody or being like, you know, frazzled with everything? Some of them might tell you, no, I don't want to talk to you. Some of them might actually open up and talk to you and tell you, you know, what's bothering them. But you as or you see a kid that's constantly crying, right? Like, don't just brush it off. Like, oh, they're always crying. No, but why? Why are they always breaking down when something gets hard? Right? So those are just little things that I have noticed um, when dealing with some of my students. Oh, okay. So what do you say to those people? I mean, I, I think you touched on it before that say, you know, I, I wish I could do all that, but I have deadlines to meet. Even the, the school system itself, I think, is can um, de deter teachers from, you know, being that involved in their students. So what do you say to those people that say, I, you know, I wish I could do that, but I have deadlines, I, I have to meet my quota. So there's things that are beyond them that prevent them from being the teacher that they So what do you say to those people? Why are you here? <laughs> and I know that might sound harsh. Like the, the reality is everybody has to feed their family, right? You, you took the job because, you know, you need to make sure that you take care of yourself and your family. But at the end of the day, like, what's your why? What's at the core of why you, you know, interact with children? Why you decided to come into te to teaching, right? What are you passionate about? Like, you have to really get to the core of it. So yeah, there's so many top-down mandates. There's so many politics and half of the stuff makes no sense at all right? But if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. So you can't just keep taking, oh, well, I got to do it because, you know, they said I need to do it. All right. But if it's not conducive or effective for your children, are you going to do it anyway? Like you're the, you're, you're your scholar's biggest advocate, right? Outside of their parents and outside of admin, right? You're, you're on the front line. Advocate for your students. And don't be scared to do so. No, I'm not telling you to go lose your job and to be disrespectful and to just be contrary for no reason. But if you really have a heart for students, if you really have a heart to making sure that they grow up to be the best that they can be, that you really have a heart for them to excel and reach their maximum potential, 
you cannot go into education just saying, I'm just going to teach them the academics and that's it. It's that's that's the recipe for disaster. You can't be considered effective or highly effective a teacher just focusing on that. That's just in my opinion. I just feel like if you're going to come into the classroom, you're coming into the classroom fully understanding and fully aware that you have to you your job is twofold and maybe even more so, but twofold in as there's that academic piece and there's that social emotional piece that also kind of lends itself to mental health. And you can't do, you can't pick and choose and say, well, I'm just going to do the academic piece or I'm just going to do, you got to do both. And you have to find a way to make them coexist and be effective at that. And that's going to take practice. It's not going to be perfect. Some days you're going to get it right. Some days it's going to be like, I don't know what the heck I just did. But as long as you continue to learn and, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to like collaborate and talk with your peers, like utilize your resources. Like we are all a resource to one another inside that building. Stop isolating yourself and operating in silos. You don't have to do it by yourself, right? And then you just also too, as an educator, like when you are, doing that social and emotional piece, right? Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't get overly involved where you start taking it home and you start like, you know, kind of treading into thin water. But just, just again, know yourself, know your capacity, right? So just be very mindful of the boundaries that you should create and should have when addressing that social emotional piece your boundaries are going to be super important and you just want to make sure that whatever you do that is within the scope of the guidelines and make sure you do not cross any lines when addressing those issues you just got to be very mindful and careful when you are addressing those issues and not overstepping your boundaries. That's why I say like utilize your resources. If you feel like it's something that is way above you and you don't have the capacity, tag your it, social worker, guidance counselor, school school psychologist. You're it. That's that's your lane. I have a student that I have a concern about that I'd like to refer you refer to you. That might look like crisis management. That might look like a conversation with the parent, but utilize your resources, utilize each other. So, so basically what you're saying, like these, these kids, they're bringing their issues from, from home, from their peers, they're, they're bringing it to the classroom and it's difficult for them to to do their work when they have all these things going on. So you're, you're saying if you could take five or 10 minutes to uh, address those issues with them, you know, you'll see, you'll see changes in them. Is, is that right? Most definitely. When students like see that the teachers like genuinely care and that they're here and it's not just the academic piece, you'll see the difference that it makes. You will. I've had students where like, it just took me spending like 10 minutes, five minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, just listening to them, not judging them, just listening to them talk and how much that helped them to focus and take ownership of their learning because they had somebody to listen or that might have looked like me listening for a minute and realizing like, oh, wait, this is a lot for me to handle. Just give me a second. Do you mind if I take you to the school guidance counselor or the social worker, right? Because that was beyond my capacity, right? And then there's sometimes we're like, as a mandated reporter, you don't really have a choice, right? You, you make the, you know, Make wise choices and use your discretion when dealing with students and their mental health issues or their social emotional issues. 
So before you were talking about boundaries, because I see, you know, I could see some teachers going overboard and, and, you know, going to the student's home and talking to the parents and, you know, so can you talk about boundaries a little bit? What should teachers be doing? What should they not be doing? Where is that line that they shouldn't cross? One, we're not mental health professionals, right? We're not licensed. So never diagnose a student. <laughs> it's not your job. You can't diagnose them. You can say, uh, from my observations, I think they might be dealing with, you know, this issue, but I would like to refer them to someone that can better evaluate them, right? That's a boundary. Never, never, ever, ever think that you as an educator can diagnose a student. That's not your job. Your job is to, if you see the signs that may resemble something that you're familiar with, refer them to the professionals that are capable to make those decisions, right? Don't overly insert yourself like, oh, I'm going to have a conference with the parents and I'm going to just question them like they're in a therapy session. It's not your job. You're not a therapist. Of course, some parents are going to vent to you, but it's also like your job to say like, okay, these are my parameters. This is what I have the capacity for you to share with me. And, or if they start talking and you realize like, oh, wait, this is too much for me to handle. Say, all right, um, I like to hear you out and I'm glad that you feel comfortable with expressing your concerns to me, but I would like to get the school social worker or a psychologist or refer you to some resources that can better assist you than I can. So no, you're not just blowing them off, but you're realizing that in that moment that that's not your lane and you don't have the capacity to deal with what they have just, you know, opened up to you about. So, you know, boundaries is all about like knowing yourself and being self-aware and the boundaries is to also protect you and safeguard you and your job because you never want a parent or a student to say that you violated their rights or you violated um, their safe space or they don't feel safe with you, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we're starting to wind down here. So do you have any final advice for any educators watching, any teachers watching, any 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 final advice to the viewers? Yeah, know your students well. Know your students well and take the time to build with them. Take the time to learn about them outside of the academic piece. You know, it's very important. And also take the time as an educator to be aware of who you are and who your identity is and to keep your why at the center of everything that you do with your students. You know, I, as I say to my students a lot, right? I'm like, listen, I really care about y'all. I care about you mentally, social, emotionally, and academic. You want to know why? Because like in the next... 10, 15 years, you know who's going to be the lawyer that I go see if I need to see a lawyer or the doctor that's going to be there or the nurse that I'm going to be there or the person that is running the business that I'm going to have to go. It's going to be you guys. So if I don't make sure that as a person on the front line that I'm doing my part to help set you up for success, it also affects me. These, are our, these students that we're teaching our scholars, they got next. So well, how you pour into them, it matters. You can't just say, oh, they're not my kids. I just come in. They just going to teach. I'm just going to teach them. They're going to learn and be on their way. No, everything comes full circle. That same scholar that's sitting in your classroom today will be the scholar that is, you know, maybe your doctor tomorrow, your lawyer the next day right? Or your real estate agent the next day, or, you know, your banker the next day. So it matters. Everything comes full circle. So I just urge you to make sure that you examine your why 
and your passion and make sure that no matter what is going on in your, you know, with, you know, the top down mandates and with your district and with your school or whatever, that you use wisdom in implementing stuff. And if it doesn't make sense and it's not helpful for students, you advocate, advocate, and don't advocate from a, an emotional piece advocate from you know deal with the facts deal with logic and 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 make it make sense appeal to their human nature when you say i'm not doing this because this is why i'm doing it right so you're your student's biggest advocate know them well absolutely thank you so much for that so let me get your little banner here all right awesome so you guys, you can find Juanita on her teacher Instagram. It's scrolling below. So definitely uh, follow her on Instagram. Reach out to her if you have any questions. And Juanita, I don't know if you want to talk about your books. Oh, yes, I, I have uh, four books. I wish I, I didn't have them out, but I do have two journals that are on Amazon. They're called She Has Evolved. Uh, one is a yellow book cover that was done for our gem mentees, um, which is the girl empowerment movement. And then the other one is a blue journal where there's like poetry and there's also space for you to write your thoughts. And that's more geared towards anybody. Then my first book is called Lifted Faces, you know, and that is also on Amazon. That's my, that's a spiritual book where I express seven different principles for helping you grow in God. Then there is I Told the Storm, where I'm a co-author with seven other women. And the book is, uh, it was done with Latanya Smiley, an awesome and anointed woman of God. And then I did Awesome Woman on the Move. Um, national prayer book with 51 other women and all these uh, books can be found on Amazon. Awesome. And all of that information will be provided to you for your viewing pleasure. So definitely get out there and get those books. All right, Juanita, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. All right, I'll put you backstage here. And it's you and me, guys. So we have reached the conclusion of our episode. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please check out our YouTube channel for more videos and clips. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, let us know what you thought about the episode today by leaving a comment in the comment section. We definitely will appreciate your feedback. And particularly about our organ, our company, if you want to learn more about us, the services that we offer, if you want to learn about the Hot Topics web series or any, any other, anything else that you want to know about us, you can visit us online. Our website is www.asepaheadtutoringservices.com. And also follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Eventbrite, and WhatsApp. So your support will also be appreciated. And one more thing before I go. We are also seeking financial contributions to our crowdfunding campaign on ifundwomen.com. iFundWomen is a platform for women entrepreneurs to have access to capital as well as coaching at the same time. So your support will be appreciated. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to play a little video so you can learn more. Hey there, have you heard of us? We're a small team of tutors here at A Step Ahead Tutoring Services. We believe that education and information should be accessible to everyone, regardless of income, race, or creed. We're dedicated to making this happen, but we need your help. Please consider donating to our crowdfunding campaign. No amount is too small. Your donation will allow us tutors to remain employed, offer free and low-cost services, and reach out to families nationwide.
With your help, we can tackle the academic challenges of our students and the emotional, mental, and behavioral changes that result from these challenges. As a bonus, we can improve our communities in the process. Support us today. We're a for-profit company, your donation may not be tax deductible. Please consult a tax professional. So that will be it. Thank you so much for joining us and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for coming. Signing off. Bye.